So we're here with uh, Dr. Priti Parikh at ISNTD Water um, from University College London. Uh, Priti, would you like to introduce yourself to, uh, to the viewers? Sure, I'm Priti Parikh and I'm a lecturer in uh, Environmental Engineering and International Development at University College London. And prior to that, I've worked in consulting for over 18 years, uh, looking at water sanitation issues in slums, in formal settlements. Okay, I, I know that your doctorate was in uh, sanitation, as you mentioned, in these peri-urban slum settings, resource-poor settings. What brings you to ISNTD Water? What's the... During my doctorate, I conducted 700 interviews, and I have captured evidence on how water sanitation improves health, education, income, and housing. And one reason is actually to bring this evidence to this very multidisciplinary event and network with a view that it can be adopted uh, for policy frameworks, it can be adopted in research around health, so we can really change um, the world the way it is. So, so what are you saying, that if you invest into this area, it has an actual effect, it has an actual, w yeah. what is that? So yeah. for example, uh, my work in slums demonstrated that if you spend 100 pounds per family on water sanitation, the family would then invest 20 times that amount improving the house and stock and goods. I, by water sanitation, you can actually improve living conditions, you can generate economic growth, development, and from the policy framework, instead of investing in building houses, we just need to invest a small amount of money in water sanitation and then people can do it by themselves. So it sounds like a very good case of evidence-based policy making or yes. at least getting the economists to put their input into the policy frameworks that, that we're discussing. Is that a roundabout in terms of, is that in the right direction? Uh, definitely it is, because I feel that currently there's very limited investment in water sanitation directly. Um, my research also showed that if you invest in water sanitation, it directly improves health, education, in particular for women and the girl child. So instead of investing just purely in health and education, if we were to also invest in water sanitation, um, the effects would be uh, multiple. And also we would look at more gender inclusive development. I think that's a very topical um, statement, if you like, because mm -hmm. of the, uh, we're now in the post-MDG, -S SDG ratified world, and everybody's talking about collaboration and, and to, to leave the empty rhetoric of the past in terms of uh, collaboration, partnership, yeah. multi-sectorialism, and move into a more real, uh, pragmatic, evidence-based um, approach. Is this something that's reflected in your current work at UCL? Uh, yes, it is. So, for example, uh, quite a lot of my projects or research projects are around how engineering can change or improve human lives. And sometimes it could be very simple engineering solutions around how you design water and sanitation better, how you provide access to energy, how you can use ICT linked with water sanitation so you have smarter systems. So it's about a combination of capturing evidence to make a very strong case for economics and policy makers but also very much directly influencing living conditions on the ground. Fantastic. In terms of uh, your work at UCL, I know it's a very exciting time for you. We were chatting yeah. earlier, um, you're the director of a new master's course, a new MSc course. Would you, would you care to just to, to elaborate on that a little? Yes, I'm very, very excited about this initiative. So last year I made a very strong case that we have a gap in the market in engineering education. We are not teaching our engineers to actually engage as global engineers and work with local communities on issues such as water, sanitation, energy, ICT. Uh, so I made a very strong case within UCL to actually set up a new master's program which will train our young engineers on how they can collaborate and how they can use engineering to actually save lives and change lives. Um, this program is also exciting because of the innovation we've introduced. So our students actually will get to work with real life clients on projects. Um, if they wish to, they may also travel as well overseas. Uh, so they get direct, very direct field experience. We bring the global challenges and issues of, say, peri-urban settlements and urban poor directly to them in the classroom. Well, that's, that's very, very interesting because we hear again and again, I mean, the last two decades have been kind of underlined by tech transfer efforts. Yes. But for sustainability, essentially, we're talking about knowledge transfer. Yes. Is this where you're taking the master's course with these linkages yes. that, that, that you're talking about? Oh, Could definitely. you can elaborate on that? Because we're very excited to hear that, to be honest. Yeah. Young engineers uh, have a tendency of going out and building things. But before doing so, I mean, we want them to pause and ask a question whether they need to. And if so, what are they looking to achieve in terms of technology transfer? 
And we wanted to engage with local communities, build up capabilities, engage in training programs, and then think whether they need to provide the technology or not. Uh, we also encourage them to think of appropriate technologies, mm -hmm. for example, which are suitable for local context, suitable for the local cult cultural context. Fantastic. So that's, as I said earlier, it's a very exciting time. Your course is full, or can we can we join? I mean, everyone is welcome yeah. uh, to join the course. And interestingly enough, what we found is we've had interest not only from engineers but from non-engineers yeah. who've worked in development, who recognise the need for investment in infrastructure. Mm. Uh, so we're actually getting interest from a very diverse audience. Mm. Uh, we receive applications from around the world, actually, mm. from about 16 countries. Yeah. Uh, so I'm pretty sure the program is going to go into a very successful program. That's fantastic. And we wish you every success with that. And uh, one last question. I mean, would there be a call for partnerships out there in terms of from your course material or the work that you're doing outside of that course at UCL to the wider, let's say, private sector? Is there a call yes. for partnerships that you'd like to make now at ISNTD Water? Uh, a few calls, actually. Uh, one is that within the MSC, we set up collaborative projects where we need real clients with real projects, and our group of students will work on problems and solutions for you. They'll develop a technical solution, but they'll develop a business plan and feasibility to make sure that the solutions are embedded on ground. We also run MSc projects with organizations uh, around the world where our students will actually do in-depth research for you on a relevant topic. And in addition to the MSc program, I am also in the midst of setting up collaborations with a variety of organizations, whether they are research or whether they are applied research. So please do get in touch. Well, fantastic. Well, you heard it here, um, and I think we'll, we'll flash the email up on the bottom of the screen for everybody to, to, to get yes. in contact with. Um, I'd like to say thank you very, very much um, for participating in the interview and I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you very much, Pretty. Thank you.